right, welcome everybody. Thanks so much for coming by. This is Chris Petri, and this is my watercolor channel. We do everything watercolor here, and we're going to actually do some beautiful purple irises here. I took a photo of some irises nearby where I work at my um, my office where I work in New Jersey in the United States. Beautiful uh, flowers. People plant flowers along their homes. There's parks everywhere. There's um, gardens people have here in the um, New Jersey area. People love plants and growing flowers and all kinds of things like this and gardens. So for me, I can find these type of uh, photographs, you know, everywhere. So I just took some some photographs, real simple, with my with my phone. Then we came here in the studio and we just said, let's make it more exciting. Let's zoom right into that section of the purple iris that we want to draw and paint and we did that I'll explain how we did this and then we did the drawings here with the pencil did a pencil drawing of it and then we did our purple irises with some green and yellow uh, complementary colors I'll show you how to mix your palette I show you all the colors how to mix really really rich purple colors with French ultramarine blue and lizard and crimson or you can go with um, ultramarine violet for your lighter washes of purple. So I show you all of that here uh, in this video, all the techniques and methods that you need in watercolor to create this beautiful flower painting. So stick with us here. Um, we'll uh, be right back in just a second. I'm just going to take a quick break and we'll be get we'll get started, okay? All right, we'll be right back. Okay, so we just saw the finished painting, some purple iris, a beautiful simple flower scene, flower painting. Um, someone in the comments you know, section asked me, please, can you can you try uh, maybe a painting of uh, purple iris? The funniest thing is, like two days later, I was by my um, office where I work, and I noticed purple iris on someone's front yard, um, and I said, let me take a picture of it. I took a picture of it with my phone, so now I've captured the picture. Now we have that. I could say that you know maybe the background could be a little bit better, you know, because. To try to draw this with all of that very um, uh, challenging background because you have all kinds of darks and lights and weeds and all kinds of things like this but I'm just going to really try to focus on the flower shapes and, and, and if I do that I think I'll be okay so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to try to focus on the sh flower shapes here and uh, we'll do this together I'm glad you're here uh, painting with me and we're gonna have a great time doing these purple iris simple um, rendition of purple iris you know I have about a six by uh, eight rectangle here maybe I'll just I'll just go around the, the rectangle like this with the tape and I like to just share sometimes little tidbits of information details that I do when I'm drawing and painting so I can just relay them to you so you can kind of make a note of it or a mental note of it whatever so whenever I put tape um, artist tape around my watercolor paper I always like to just make sure that I with my nail I just really press hard on the, the edge that meets the paper I don't necessarily care about the outer edge that much but right where the paper meets the tape that's I want to really make sure I press hard on that so no water infiltrates in there watercolor infiltrates into that underside of the tape this way when we lift up our tape there's no like uh, awkward looking um, uh, colors and, and washes underneath that tape edge. So the tape edge needs to be nice and tight down to the paper. And that's all I'm doing here with my nail. I just kind of press down hard on that. And then the rest of the tape I leave, you know, just normal. So this way, this way when we peel off the tape, it's not like everything is like really super, you know, pressed down and tight. Just, just where, the, where the paper meets the tape. That's the most important edge you have to really press down with your nail or with your brush you can also or a pencil you know you can kind of go along with a pencil like this the, the, the butt end of a pencil uh, and not with an eraser though or a paintbrush whatever you have you could really do it with anything but the nail works good just good so it's nice and tight and we're gonna start out with just uh, having a fun time here we're you know we're not gonna get too much into um, uh, every little detail. Let's just get a light sketch of what we want to do here. So this is the this is the main 
um, purple iris here. So we're going to try to keep that same um, look as we put it onto this paper. So we want to fill up that paper with lots of subject matter, our irises, our purple irises. So I'm just going to go with a super light sketch up here. Just super light. I don't know if you can see that. Just so I can kind of see where I'm going to put my irises and here. So I'm just trying to get a very simple silhouette of everything so that I don't run the risk of maybe making them too small in the picture frame here. So I'm just kind of trying to keep the same look here and there's some so I'm going to try to get some of the stems in here. And then there's another one down here. That's about here and then down this way. Okay. And this one is about here. Like that. Like that. So if you can kind of see how I did this. Um, just trying to I get some stems in there that are maybe a few little bits of uh, these uh, leaves at the bottom, but not too many, just maybe a few. Like this, just a few leaves. And then can you see how I lightly sketched it? very very super light sketch the reason I do that super light sketch is if I have a problem I can just really simply erase a little bit with a kneaded eraser to maybe adjust some things and say oh I made these a little bit too small over here I need to make them bigger and fill up my picture frame space but here I'm looking good you can kinda of see here there's just a little bit of space over here and I captured that there's that tip of the flower over here, the iris over here, almost touching the, the frame. Good. Then I went over here. Maybe I'm a little bit to the left over here. I have a little more space than maybe I'm looking at over here. But that's okay. I find that that's not going to be a problem. And then up top here, I can kind of see I'm about right where I need to be, just a little bit below the top of the frame, picture frame. So this is a picture frame here. I zoomed in. So I took my uh, I took my picture and just enlarged it like that and kind of framed it out. So we have everything here. This is close to the top. Good, close to the top. Over here, not too far from the edge. That looks pretty good. Okay, we're close to the edge over here. Close to the edge over here. This flower here down here is over here you know I'm gonna try to shorten this up a little bit so you can kind of see that I kind of shorten this up a bit so maybe I made my frame like that and you can see here the bottom of this flower this iris here is just a little bit above the picture frame here so we'll consider this the picture frame here where the paper towel is just I'm trying to kind of frame it a little better so you can kind of see what I did here and I think that's good so we have this iris here Perfect, just a little bit above the picture frame here. Over here to the right, we're looking good. Up top, we're looking good, just a little bit above. The uh, iris here is our picture frame. And then over here, our picture frame is just a little bit to the left of this here. So you can kind of see how I lightly sketch this so that we have the proper composition where it looks good. You can set up your, you know, you can take a picture of any flowers you want. You can take pictures of flowers online, out of books, out of magazines, whatever you want to do. All you have to do is create your um, your subject matter, maybe on your phone, your computer, your iPad, your iPhone, whatever you have, and you just, you know, 
zoom it in, zoom it out, try to fill up the picture space with lots of subject matter. So we're here we're filling up our picture space with our iris like this. Much preferable than doing something like this. If you paint something like this, you can kind of see there's way too much empty space around these flowers. We, the, the, we, we can always remember this. Um, does this make sense? Uh, you're the artist. You have to kind of think to yourself, what is the exciting part of my subject matter? So as an artist, you're saying to yourself, okay, what is the most exciting part of my subject matter here when I take this photograph of these flowers, you know, that you might be seeing out and you take some pictures when you're out and about and things. And you say, well, yeah, the irises are the main focal point of my, so you can zoom into that. And that's what you want to do. You want to fill your picture frame full of exciting purple iris like this. And that looks more preferable than trying to paint something like this where all of a sudden you've got tiny little flowers and all kinds of other things around here that aren't so important. Like we're not really concerned about the hedges and uh, these, you know, other plants and leaf forms down here. We're, in, we're excited about this, the, the iris, the purple iris. So let's fill our picture space with that. This is how photographers think and how film filmmakers that make movies and TV shows, they're always thinking how can we fill up that picture frame with our subject matter, the exciting part of the the what we're trying to capture. Okay, so that's all it is really. It's just a kind of a fundamental principle of filling up your picture frame with lots of exciting subject matter and not getting um, losing track of what your focal point is or, and what your importance is of your subject. So if you have a subject here, let's just say this is a person and you're filming a movie and you want to you're going to like be filming a star of your movie. You want your star of your movie close up. You want to see a close-up picture of the star of the movie. Like that. So when they make films, they always zoom in on the on the star of the films or the stars of the movie. They don't do this and make a little tiny person walking around in the in the movie where you can barely see them. No, they want you to see the stars and you know, they zoom in on them and make sure you can you're focusing in on the subject, the main subject of the of the film and the characters. So if you see this as like a character, the character of your painting is your flowers. You want to zoom in on that. Hope that makes sense. And um, we're going to get started in just a second. We'll do the uh, we're going to do the contour drawing, which is I'm going to go over with a darker pencil line, just so we can kind of really see the drawing in a little more detail. I just wanted to do that super light pencil sketch, and we call that a preliminary sketch. Those of you that have been with me a long time, you know. We're always doing preliminary sketches, basically super light sketches first, so that we we get this idea of filling up the subject, filling filling up our rectangle with the subject matter like this. If by some chance you lose focus or lose track, and all of a sudden you're drawing your purple iris and you're making little small flowers like this, you can catch yourself while you're doing your preliminary sketch and go, oh wait a minute. I need to really zoom into my subject matter. So you'll adjust it and say, okay, there we go. That looks much better like that. And then you, you can just simply erase your light sketches once you look back and step back a little bit and look at it and go, oh yeah, I want to really fill up my whole rectangle with subject matter. Just like this. Okay. Hope that really makes sense to you. Does that make sense? Excellent. I hope it does. We're going to come back. I'll Take a quick break and then we'll draw this with a little darker pencil line so you can kind of see how I contour draw these uh, purple iris um, flowers and then we'll start painting in just a second or two after that. Okay, all right, I'll be right back. Okay, we're getting started again. Let's uh, get right into our contour drawing. So we have our preliminary sketch on our paper. You can kind of see those light lines of my flowers, my iris. Let's start out. Let's start out right here, maybe on this first one here, and I'm just going to start to go around and start to contour draw. Contour drawing is simply starting in one place and then working out into your subject matter as you're drawing and not going too far out like this from one area, but staying close to the areas that you're working within so you can kind of see the scale of everything as you're going. So I hope that's kind of, it's easier to keep drawing from one flower and then to the next one here and over here and over here 
then starting out and then all of a sudden going way down here, you can kind of judge the size of each flower by looking at each one you're drawing at the same time, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So we'll do that. We're just going to kind of do that. Uh, Okay, so now I'm going to go over here, and there's some more over there, flower over here. doesn't have to be perfect. Always remember, when you're drawing flowers, um, you have a lot of uh, freedom. So enjoy the freedom of drawing flowers. As long as it's somewhat close, you're going to be okay. So you don't have to worry about every little nuance. Just try to get the basic shape of it. And you can kind of see I'm just doing basic shapes here. And there's another leaf uh, petal, flower petal there, iris petal there. And we come down there, and there's another little bit there. And then over here, there's another. They kind of look like ruffles of uh, maybe like some, uh, you know, how you have ruffles on like uh, curtains or um, maybe on uh, upholstery, uh, pillows, upholstery. It's kind of like an upholstery flowers. They kind of look like they have those ruffles here and there, and especially iris. Iris look like they're very, very much uh, a lot of um, curves in the uh, shapes of the petals, curves. And uh, so that's what we're going to try to capture. And then there's a, okay, there's a, um, stem there. So I'm going to try to capture that stem. And then over here, once we're over here, then we're going to notice there's another leaf form there and another one over here. And so I'm just trying to capture that. And then over here, there's a leaf form there and then another one here. Like that. And I try to capture that little bit of um, highlight there where you can see the very very uh, edge of the petal of the flower of the iris so I'm going to try to capture that and then there's a little bit of a stem here like this and then like this like a like a shoot and a stem there so I'm going to do that and I'm going to keep going here and then I'm going to come down here and, and look at this this flower portion here And I just try to, again, I'm just trying to focus on the free-flowing shape. I'm not getting too worried about every detail. I'm just trying to capture the basics of it, really. Like this, like that. Okay, and then there's some more stems there. And the stems in these small leaf forms here, those will take care of themselves. We're going to do those very loosely with some green paint. And we're going to not make those too much a part of the picture. We're going to try to keep that minimal. These green leaf forms down here. We're going to keep those very minimal. Let's make the stars of the show up here. The uh, purple iris. And there's a little bit of some uh, leaves and shoots and things like that on the... Uh, and I think that looks good. Let's make that our finished pencil drawing or contour drawing again you can do a little more work if you want to um, get a little more what I think is once you start once you start painting you'll be able to um, once you start painting you'll be able to paint in some of these darks and lights see how these are some darker shapes there with that darker purple and then the lighter purple darker purple lighter purple lighter purple little darker purple in there really dark purple in there look at that and some pinks and purples you can do that while you're painting so as long as you get your pencil sketch somewhat close to the shapes that you're seeing here you're fine don't worry about it and always remember too pencil sketches look a little funny when you're doing them so don't get worried and don't start erasing everything and with your eraser and going, oh, i got to fix that. Don't worry about it. Just render it the best you can. And even if it looks like this might be too many flowers, then you can just really 
you know, reduce it, make it, make it a smaller, a smaller painting. Best way to do that, I try to, um, if you want to make something smaller, you could take some mats like this, put it over your, your phone, or you could even zoom in a little more and just say, you know, I'm just going to make a, a couple, I'm going to make a couple of flowers like this and just do that. And this is what's great about technology and with phones and computers and iPads. You can create your own design with your, your um, picture and your phone. You can zoom in and zoom out. So if you want to keep it more simple, you don't have to paint all of these groupings of this iris, purple iris. You can say, you know what, and you can look this up online on your phone, on your computer, and say, I'm going to look up purple iris, type that in. You'll see tons of pictures. Click on one of those pictures, save it to your computer, save it to your desktop, or you just use it right off the internet, right off the, the search engine. If you have Google or Yahoo or whatever search engine you use, click on the picture and then just take your picture and just frame it the way you want. You might want to frame one over here and say, I'm going to do these, these, this bunch of flowers right here. And you can do that. Or you can come over here and say, I'm going to do just these up here like that, something like that. And you can frame this just like this here. I'm just happy, you know, I'm just kind of looking at it my, in my own perspective and saying, okay, I think I like it like this and I'm doing it this way, but you can even make it simpler for you by just zooming in and just doing maybe two irises, like one and two, one and two with another one over here, maybe with some leaves, make it easy for yourself. That's what I always say. You're the artist, make things easy for yourself as you're working this way. You know, you make it, uh, you know, f you know, make it so that it's more simple for you and simplified to create your artwork in the beginning. Once you start painting for a couple years or more, you can get more complicated, do more complicated pictures. But in the beginning, if you want, you just do maybe one flower. Take one flower and just zoom in on one flower. Try to capture the basic shape of those flowers. And then we'll, we'll start out with the colors. And in just a second, you'll see how we're going to paint this. So always remember, you can adjust and enhance and um, do different spin-offs from what I'm doing. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. You can do a couple, you know, different spin-offs like that. You know, as a, again, zooming in, doing less flowers perhaps than doing all of these. I'm doing one, two, three, four, five, six maybe. I'm doing like six of these. There might be six here. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe there's five here or four, four or five. You can simplify it, maybe do like two, like that. It's up to you. Okay, so I'm going to go back to what I did here originally, like that. Up there, like that. Like that. Maybe a little bit over like that. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. Adjusters if you want to. I'll be right back. We'll get our paints going and we'll start our painting, okay? Be right back. All right, we're getting back started again, and uh, we're going to begin painting. So we're going to get some colors out on our palette. It's always a good idea to maybe get some color out on our palette first. So I'm going to get some of that purple. We're doing purple iris. So let's get our purple mixture out here. We'll get some good dark color here, some good rich, rich color like that. So we're going to make sure we get plenty of straight paint out there on the palette and there's a little bit of um, I'll rinse off the brush dry off some paint maybe some alizarin crimson there too with some um, alizarin crimson and French ultramarine blue that's also a great purple so let's mix it up let's make some different purples you can make a you can use your French ultramarine violet straight out of the tube, like we did here. Then you can take some uh, French ultramarine blue and some alizarin crimson, and you can also make some interesting uh, violet that way too. So you can kind of do both. This way you have a mixture. So I'll do the darker mixture of purple, where you kind of see some of the darker purples there. Let's use the homemade purple we made with French ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. And then we'll start out. So we're going to do this a la prima. 
So we'll do a la prima method here. And uh, I'll just start putting in the darker purple here. And then once you get a little bit of dark in there, um, you can rinse off the brush. Dry off the brush a little bit on a paper towel, sponge, or paper, you know, uh, tissue. And then you can kind of lighten it up a little bit. Like that. So you don't want to have it all dark. Let's keep a little bit of it light. Like that. Maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson up here. So we get a little bit of modulation of color. So that maybe it's not all straight purple, but we have a little bit of a mixture in there of some alizarin crimson with our French ultramarine blue. And then we'll go in here, rinse off the brush, dry off a little bit of the water, and then we're going to go into a little bit of the more kind of lighter, so the uh, more lighter shades of purple here and I'll just keep referencing the photo like that rinse off the brush dry off some of that water and very subtly work out that color like so and then let's go right up in here Okay, so we have a little, and I'm going to try to just move around the paint here and there. Have fun with this. Do not stress. Okay, like that. Mix around a little bit of the colors. And there's some really dark darks here, so let's get that there over here. You can see that's the real. dark purple there and there's some more dark purple here like that and then too we have a little dark there like that rinse off the brush dry off some of that water and then let's just soften out that color, like so. Like that. And then let's go over here. We have a little more of that alizarin crimson French ultramarine kind of look there. Darker purple. With a little more of that, of that red, that alizarin crimson kind of feel to it. But not too much, we don't want to make it red, red, you know, just, it's kind of got that little bit of a, like that, and then here, lizard and crimson, French ultramarine blue, like that, and I try to stay with my flowers as I can. I try to stay with working within, the, within each flower or each petal of each flower of this iris. Like I don't want to start, the temptation would be to start taking all the darks and say, well, oh, let me go out and start doing all the darks because I don't want to really waste my paint and keep, you know, rinsing off my brush. And I, I totally understand that. I try to conserve on paint too. A lot of times I'm really trying to think of that. Like how can I save some of my paint? I don't want to keep wasting paint by rinsing off my brush but with this type of a painting you we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves because what happens is if you try to mix this dark and you start to go in and do all these other dark areas because you say oh well there's a dark there a dark there a dark there a dark over here you can kind of see it here there's some darker petals there you know that darker french ultramarine of uh, lizard and crimson type wash you can see there's other dark areas and the temptation is to say well i'm going to start going over there and get some of those darks but if you skip ahead like that, the problem is then you can't blend the colors and soften them out. So that's why I don't do that. And so you have to really try to maybe avoid that if you can. I know it's really kind of tough because I, I hate to waste paint too myself. Because I know paint is very expensive. The two paint especially. I use Winsor & Newton and Holbein a lot. 
they're expensive so I totally get it but the problem that we can get have happen is if you try if you try going out and doing too many darks all around your painting just to conserve on paint then you can't go back and kind of soften out your washes because they'll be dry by the time you go back to try to soften them they'll be kind of unpleasant looking so if you can kind of see what I'm saying it's really just a matter of the ideal situation is you have to actually work one fl flower to petal at a time really and like this like we're doing now like we can't so see now when I put that wash on like that then I can start to soften it by you know taking my brush rinsing it off drying off some of that water so that my brush is just a little tiny bit damp and then I can kind of smooth that out a little bit make it lighter we want to get those does that make sense we want to kind of get those lights and darker darks as we as we paint our petals of our flower we don't want to have it all looking like one um, bit of color we want to have variation in that and I think you can kind of see how I'm getting that there throughout these flowers and So that's the, the, that's the goal anyway, to try to do it that way. To just try to work a little section, you know, each petal at a time, even though it's a temptation to want to wanna try to get all the darks in at one time so you don't waste paint. That's the, the kind of the problem is then you, then you, things dry on you and then you can't soften them out. See how I can soften this out like this? I can sort of lighten, soften that up a little bit, make it lighter. You could also tap on it a little bit with the tissue, but those variations are really important. And we're just going to keep moving on here. I'm going to do a couple splashes. I'm not going to paint really the green so much. I will maybe do a touch of green. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll get a little bit of green. Sap green. Let's make a mixture. Sap green. Um, olive green. Maybe a little olive green. Maybe a little bit of uh, viridian green. Like that. couple splashes of that green and then maybe we'll do a little green we'll do some green down here for some of these so we will use green a little bit here and there so let's get some of that green in So I just do some quick um, stems with the green. Maybe a little bit of gold, some raw umber. A couple of splashes, a little bit of raw umber maybe. So you can maybe add in a little bit of raw umber and uh, green to your mix there. Sap green. So I'm just going to try to get in some get too too much detail with the green just a little bit to get it a 
couple of splashes just so we have some interesting looking marks here and there. And if some of your splashes are too much, they look too harsh or too, you know, you could blot up a couple splashes here and there if you need to. No big deal. And then we're going to continue here. Um, again, purple, French, uh, or this is uh, ultramarine violet. So that's ultramarine violet there. And then some of our homemade purple, French ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. That makes an incredible, beautiful, dark, rich violet with straight paint, not water, too much water, very little water, if any. Just straight paint out of your palette. French ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson. That makes an incredible violet, rich violet. Let's see how that looks. Let's take a gander at that. Okay, that looks good. And then you can kind of dab it in here and there. A little dab will do you. And then we go over here and we get some more there. So we're just trying to get those beautiful uh, petals of the iris here. And we, these are pretty rich in color. So, you, you know, use that homemade purple. And then towards the, uh, towards the edges of the petal of the flower, you rinse the brush off dry off, you know, get a fresh paper towel or um, tissue, dry off your brush, get your brush really dry so it's just a damp brush. And then you just carefully kind of work that lighter bit of paint like that to the edges of the petal. Like that. And if you have to, you can add a little. I don't think we're going to have to add any white paint to this. You know, sometimes you can take a little bit of uh, titanium white, titanium white paint at the end of your painting once it's dry and add some highlights to it if you want. But I think you can really get a beautiful look without having to do that so much on a, on a flower painting like this, really. Um, so I will continue on here. I just try, I try to cover my phone with a little piece of plastic so I don't splash paint all over my phone. So that's why I have that plastic on there. But uh, I'm really uh, feeling like we're coming along here. Uh, I've got to zoom in a little more. Like that. I think we were like this, pretty much. I'm going to put the plastic over my phone. And looks like we have to do these over here. Again, more dark, rich purple, which is French ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. Let's get that straight paint. No, no water really. Just the dampness of the brush is all the water we're going to use for this part here. You can see that. Can you can you see how that is? How rich and dark that color is. That's because we didn't add any water to it. We just rinsed off our brush, dried the water off on our brush on a paper towel, a sponge, tissue. Then we go in and grab paint, straight paint right out of the palette, fresh squeezed tube paint. We're not using dried paints where we're scrubbing around trying to get paint off of a dry palette of paints. We have to have fresh, moist, goopy paints. And then you just get that soft, moist paint and you just get it on there straight, no water. And that's how you get these really beautiful contrasts and darks and lights in your painting. And that's really what really can create beautiful uh, impact in your paintings when you have that dark and light in your paintings. Because we're painting it the way we, we really are looking at this photograph and really trying to, um, we're trying to really key in on what we're seeing here. Trying to get the lightness and of the, the leaf, the leaf, uh, the petal petals, and we could, you know, we could add a little more there, a little more ultramarine violet here and there, where we see a little more dark, like that, like that. Mm -mm. 
And there's another dark here. That's another petal kind of going here and then going behind that flower there. And I think we have one more petal here. Quite a bit of that dark purple there. And then underneath it, it's a light, lighter wash like so. So we go over here, rinse off the brush, dry off the paint on a paper towel, tissue, sponge, whatever you have, apron. Then you go in and get some of this light wash here. We have already pre-mixed in the palette. And then we just add this little light wash over here. There we go. And then over here, I think that's some green. So we could put some green in here like that. And you know, you can add some greens here and there if you want. I'm going to look at this over here and say, okay, that looks like it's like that. Then you can add some green, maybe around a few spots like that. Maybe a little lemon yellow there, cadmium lemon yellow, like that. And then you can just maybe add some of that cadmium lemon yellow to your painting over on this side perhaps a little bit. If it doesn't look great you can blot it up and just leave a little bit of it. Like that. And a little more over here maybe. Again, experiment with your paintings, with your compositions. Don't feel like you have to do everything the same every time, you know? Maybe you do some different things here. So right, right now I'm just experimenting a little bit, looking at how I can go around some of my leaf forms with a little bit of green, you know? Maybe just add a little bit of an extra excitement. your painting you can do what you want you can experiment try different things don't feel locked into any one um, way of doing things I'm trying to get a little bit of some green mixed in here so that it looks a little interesting and I blot up a little bit as I go a couple splashes and I think that's pretty much good so this I'm very happy with I hope you'll enjoy doing this, and I always mention too, if you're new here or if you've been watching a while and you haven't subscribed, please uh, feel free to subscribe. On the, There's a subscribe button below on the right-hand side. Um, I always invite everybody, and if this is your very, very first time coming to my channel, I want to thank you so much for stopping by, and it's really exciting that you're going to maybe start your watercolor journey here on my channel. I do everything watercolor, so week after week, month after month, and year after year, we're always doing the same thing, watercolor watercolor methods, watercolor techniques, all the t details of watercolor so that you can really build up your um, knowledge of watercolor and you'll be able to paint really well within you know a year or two you'll be painting at a professional level if you're just following along each week as we go so really if you're just starting out and you want to learn watercolor stay right here on my channel just subscribe on the right hand side down below here click on the notification bell this way YouTube will let you know I've made a new video I make them all the time every week week after week again I'm just always making videos every week we do all kinds of subject matter this week flowers next week boats if you don't like flowers and boats we're gonna do landscapes or city scenes or figure painting but everything is watercolor and we also do some drawings and some sketching as well mixed in with our videos so we're doing everything that has to do with watercolor painting and drawing you always draw first before you paint to get a basic um, you know rendering of what you're gonna 
uh, work on, your composition, your painting. So I hope you'll um, join us, come into the comments section, ask questions, leave comments, and I thank you all for leaving beautiful comments and thanking me for my work here on YouTube. I'm really so excited to be here. So I'm going to keep painting and uh, bringing you the best content I can. And um, this is just another really fun painting we can do together. These are purple iris um, flowers, kind of wild looking. These are taken from a photograph from someone's front yard. And um, we'll, we'll actually uh, create more paintings just like this in the very near future. Thanks again for coming by and painting with us and happy painting. Um, enjoy and we'll see you on the next video. Okay, bye bye for now.